One of the complaints that, that the networks make uh, is that your deep pockets, Netflix's deep pockets, like Amazon's or Apple, give, gives you an advantage. And they talk about, for instance, when you hired, you made a $300 million uh, contract with Ryan Murphy, a showrunner, successful showrunner, yeah. uh, Ronda, um, Shonda Rhimes. Um, that, that gives you an advantage that they can't compete with. They, they, can, all, they can compete with that. They can spend $300 million? Yeah, we were competing dollars. with them, remember? We were competing with them to do that deal. And he was an incredibly important and prolific showrunner for that network. But uh, or that studio, C I should say. CBS would say, I can't afford $300 million. And what will it do to my economics if I have to pay $300 for him and then $200 for her? And I mean, what we have found is our, our biggest investments have turned out to be our most efficient ones. Uh, the Crown at the time was touted as one of the most expensive productions. It's not true, but it was widely reported as being the most expensive Netflix show, maybe the most expensive show on TV. It's the most efficient show, too, meaning so, that it draws a big enough audience and it attracts membership at a level that pays for itself you know, over and over again. And I think that's true in almost, in most, certainly in the entertainment businesses. But share, share with the audience, uh, let's assume that I'm a showrunner and you pitch me as to why I should move from a network to Netflix. One of the big drivers right now is when, we, when I'm talking to a showrunner about a deal, um, they watch Netflix. Their kids watch Netflix. Their neighbors watch Netflix. And um, the thing I think that creators want more than anything is to have their work in the culture. They want to be in the zeitgeist. They want to be talked about. And that's, that, that, to me, is something that, that is the kind of hook. Um, the economics, I have to make sure they're whole. Uh, even as badly as you want your stuff in the culture, you also want to be paid commensurate with what you've been making. So that's the starting point. And but if I have a hit show on a network, my audience is bigger than the audience for Netflix, right? Mm, depends. Depends on the show. And we have many shows that are bigger than anything on the network. You never show. tell us what your I know. audience says. <laughs> <laughs> Might yeah. you change? No, I mean, like I said, you, you just wrote a big book about advertising, and it's really advertising is a really important driver as to why. Networks have to be transparent about ever, about ratings because that's what are you, are, is the advertiser getting the eyeball. Um, our business is not tied to advertising no, at but, all. But and in I'm fact, we have, we have many shows that uh, don't work the first weekend or the first week or the first month and catch on and grow and grow and grow. And I'd be a, and I'm really the reason why I haven't got into uh, talking about the ratings is because what I don't want to do is have a list of 20 things. And the, the, the press, God love them, are a little lazy. And they will look at the thing at the top of the list and say, that's a hit. And the thing at the bottom of the list and say, that's a failure. And it creates a bunch, a lot of creative uh, pressure on the talent to create bigger and bigger shows, even though the one, this show is successful based on its investment to me, which is why we booked the but, show in the but, first place. But you're talking to me. I'm a showrunner. Yeah. And I'm asking you, Ted, what kind of an audience? I have an audience. I have a 10 rating. A uh, huge number of people are watching me every week. Yeah. Can you, how do I know that you, you're comparable? Um, directionally, we, de we definitely share that with our creative people, meaning that it shows meeting the expectations that we thought going in or isn't, where it's playing and where it isn't. Um, and then the biggest one is the pickup. I mean, the show's six, really what you care about that number really is if am I going to get a second season or a third season? And that's the best, that's the best indication that you are. One of the things that David Fincher, when he, he did House of Cards for you, he said that what I like about Netflix is that I feel like I'm creating, I can write a novel, because yeah. people can binge. Right. Talk about, is, is that part of your sales pitch? That, that, well, for sure. I mean, the, the, remember when we were licensing only on Netflix, we would take the shows that the networks made and, and put them on Netflix as they aired, but without the commercials, and then put all the episodes, jam all the episodes together. Now, there's a big fall off episode to episode on television shows so that creatively you get in the habit of catching the audience up to what happened if you didn't tune in last week. So you're not totally, you know, you may lose 40% of the audience week over week. So you have to realize that people who are watching tonight may not have seen last week. So you have to craft a little bit of exposition in every episode. And if you look at that, some shows are heavy in exposition every episode. And if you take, if you go into, if you sit down writing an episode knowing that everyone watching this episode saw the other episode, the one before it, and maybe just saw it, then you can, it frees you up and, and literally just in time frame, you might get 10 to 17 minutes of storytelling per hour back into the show, with, plus the commercial breaks. So you real, when we do a, a 60 minute show, we're doing 60 minutes of content without exposition. So it's, it is more like an epic novel 
and people are writing, now when they do a Netflix show, they're writing it the way people watch it. When we license a show from the network, they're writing it to the network and how, they, how people will watch it there. But how important is it when, when you talk to the talent, the showrunner or the, or the directors, uh, how important is it that you don't have commercials? Um, I, I don't think that actually even comes up very often. For the creative yeah, people, it doesn't? Mostly for the running time. I mean, remember the networks remember getting these big fights about. But it's not times. that they're writing to commercial break and at a commercial break. Yeah, but that's part of the same thing. Just the structure. It's the general structure of the the, the shows running without breaks and and, and altogether that they could do that. 